<laughs> Didn't get the memo. <laughs> okay. It's just people, I mean, you never know. You never know. American people have a national paper. I think there is a national paper. Where does it like go? I know today's like season day. What? National season day? So uh, the problems that you did or the problems that we went through Monday, I think they're fine because they're just straightforward, strong acid, strong base. Hydrogen ion concentration, go back and forth between pH, hydroxide ion concentration, POH. Life is not that simple. So we're taking it up a notch. We're going to switch gears from strong acids and strong bases to weak acids. Okay. Then I'm just going to jump in there and do a problem. So the the um, this will remember when I said that uh, the hard work you did in unit three will pay off in unit four. Okay. Ice tables and such. I'm going to do an ice table. I'm just going to jump in and do a problem. It's called solving the equilibrium system. And hopefully it's going to ring some bells. So here we go. We're dealing with a weak acid. The formula of the weak acid is given. When I see this, and actually you're going to see the equilibrium here in a minute, but when I see HC6H4NO2, I usually think this H right here, that's going to be the proton that kicks off here in a minute. We're going to show on the product side, the H plus, and then the C6H4NO2 minus with a minus one. Okay, so we have a weak acid. Um, the, the, the solution was prepared to be 0.012 molar in the weak acid. Um, notice it's acidic, okay, um, and the temperature is given. So we're supposed to knock out the Ka value. So one of the things uh, that I've done these over the years and I have kind of struggled with is you have to think of it this way, is when somebody went to the lab and prepared this solution, they prepared it so it was 0 0.012 mole of the weak acid. So they, they added their whatever and they brought it up to volume. So it was the, um, the, the full acid, the HC6, is it H5NO2, H4. Okay. And then from there, it broke apart a little bit. And I don't, I'm just, I just want to take a minute to kind of think through this. So what I mean to say is once they dissolved it all up, to a certain extent, you're going to see this on a slide coming up, C6H4NO2, to a certain extent, this acid, dicing, broke up to kick off a, a proton and lead back the C6H4NO2 with a minus one charge, okay? So to a certain extent, it did that. We see it's um, acidic, and so actually it's this hydrogen ion that made the pH um, 3.9, 3.39, okay? The Ka is given in this case. Oh, no, we're supposed to find the Ka. So let me go on back to my slides now. I just kind of wanted to set the stage for this. This actually is going to be similar to unit three problems where we were trying to find a KC. We were given the initial concentrations of the reactants and products, and we were given one of them at equilibrium. Check this out. The equilibrium concentration we're given is going to be the hydrogen ion because you guys did some problems where we can lickety split, go from pH to the hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Um, this is the weak acid in equilibrium with its H plus, and actually we're gonna, I'll go ahead and throw a term out there. This thing with the negative, this the C6H4NO2, actually we're gonna call it the conjugate base here at some point. But when you work these problems, you really should be writing this down, even if I don't ask you to. Okay. 
So we, what we know, with, what we do with equilibrium expressions is we put the molar concentration of the products raised to their stoichiometric coefficients divided by the molar concentration, in this case, of the reactant raised to its stoichiometric coefficient. All coefficients are one, so that all works. Notice that I'm not always consistent, but I do like sometimes putting this little e. That means the equilibrium concentrations because it's a k, k a in the q. Okay. All right, so we're supposed to find Ka, so all we need to know are these equilibrium concentrations, plug it in there, and then we have Ka, that's it. So I mentioned the ice table. I would really do an ice table. If we go ahead and set up our ice table, column for our, um, our unionized acid, we have a column for our hydrogen ion, a column for what we're going to call the conjugate base here, and then we have initial uh, change in that equilibrium. So this is where you kind of have to think of it stepwise. This is why, I guess, what kind of throws me off stepwise. So initially, you can see what I've got on my initial row there. Initially, for the, what we say, the unionized weak acid, we're looking at 0.012 molar. Um, initial molar concentration of hydrogen ion is zero. Now, I know that water, just by default, has what we talked about the other day, one uh, 1 times 10 minus 7 moles per liter, no more. But we're going to see that that's negligible here. Okay. The change, by definition, we said we're going to let x be equal to the moles of the weak acid that ionized. Remember, when we're talking about ionized, we're talking about keeping all the proton. So that means we have uh, negative x here, plus x, plus x. Those are from stoichiometry. We can come up with some equilibrium concentrations and end up like this. Okay. So I usually put a line there. And I think my, my, my slides actually kind of do it both ways, with and without an ice table. So what we know then is I can take these quantities in the bottom and plug them in for my Ka expression. But check this out. And I don't know what you need from this, but... I can come up with the equilibrium concentration of my hydrogen ion from my pH. That's what I, I had said before. So if I can come up with the hydrogen ion concentration, that's going to be what? Plus x? So by golly, I have my x's figured out, and I can go back to the, my x table and plug in the value. So we know to get it to go backwards from a pH, what you do to get the hydrogen ion is you take 10 raised to the negative pH. So 10 raised to the negative 3.39 gives you 4.1 times 10 to the minus 4. And that would be the equilibrium molar concentration of hydrogen ion. That would also be the equilibrium molar concentration of uh, this guy right here. Okay. This is my slide to say what I just said a minute ago. On my ice table, you notice I put a big fat zero for the initial molar concentration of hydrogen ion, which really wasn't right. But... You figure the magnitude of the hydrogen ion from auto ionization water is really pretty low, okay, compared to the compared to this this guy. You're talking a magnitude of ten to the minus seven, so that was, that works, okay. Um, okay, so here's our ice table, and now we know x's. So we're almost done with this problem. We're so done. So uh, we need to go ahead and plug in um, that x, for instance, right here. We need to know by difference how much of the um, the the, uh, it's got a the protonated form of the weak acid. How much of the weak acid we have left? Now you guys can picture this because you guys have done enough problems. But can you see where actually? If I put, what, 4.1 times 10 to the minus 4 at this point, 0, 0, 0, 4, 1, right? So when I line those two up, actually, my x is not going to even change my, it's, am I making sense here? Okay. So my point was that, yeah. How is it called? Uh, simplifying assumption? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So what I was trying to say, yeah, is that um, at equilibrium, it remained unchanged. 
because so little ionized and actually we are going to use another simplified assumption in the next problem. So we're done almost. So we just need to plug these quantities back into our Ka expression. And it looks like this. I don't know. This is without an ice table. So I did with an ice table. I like ice tables. This is without an ice table. The same thing. What kind of apple was that, Allison? Okay. Oh, nice joints. <laughs> So this is kind of without an ice table, I guess. Okay. <laughs> so here we go. Dun, dun, dun. So our goal was to knock out the Ka uh, equilibrium or for the, the ionization constant for the sweet acid. So we would put the molar concentrations of the H plus and the conjugate base at the top, molar concentration of the unionized weak acid at the bottom, and two sig figs were looking at a Ka of 1.4 times 10 to the minus fifth. I was getting ready for today's lecture. I'm like, usually the Ka will be given. <laughs> but in this case, we uh, used equilibrium concentrations in the form of what the pH was to knock out the Ka. So it's legit. Okay. So let's work another problem. It's got a little slightly different twist to it. So we're supposed to not we're supposed to come up with the with the hydrogen ion concentration and the pH, which my goodness, if you have the hydrogen ion concentration, all you gotta do is take a negative log of it to get the pH of a solution that was prepared, and I think I'll just go ahead and leave my beaker there. Um, this is, uh, looks like it's a CDC acid. So you can see that CH3COOH, here in a minute when I show it kicking off a proton, the, the H plus that's going to go actually is that last one. I think we talked a little bit about groups and the CH3 actually is a methyl group. So that hydrogen is not going to go to that hydrogen. Is. So here we go. CH3COOH and 0 0.10 molar. And then here in a minute, you're going to see CH3COOH in equilibrium with my weak acid kicking off a proton. The one that's going to go is this one. And so I write CH3COO negative and negative one. Um, all right. So we're supposed to question mark or after that molar concentration. Oh, and this time we are given Ka is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. All right. So what we got? Well, we need to kind of think of the chemistry that's going on. So this is the chemistry that's going on behind the scenes. This weak acid is kicking off to a certain extent, not much, but it's kicking off. It's making this solution acidic. We should write the Ka expression. So it would be the molar concentration of the H plus times the molar concentration of the CH3CO minus divided by the molar concentration of the CH3COOH. Okay, and I like ice tables. So basically what we're after in ice tables, we are after the equilibrium concentration of the hydrogen ion. 
So our ice table, if we let x be equal to the molar concentration of the weak acid that ionizes, then our ice table looks like this, where we have columns, CH3COOH, H+, H plus, CH3CO, negative 1. Um, again, we're going to say there's no hydrogen ion initially. Letter changes will be equal to negative X plus X plus X. And so our equilibrium concentrations, we take the initial, apply the change. So at equilibrium, you're looking at the uh, weak acid's going to be 0 0.10 minus X. The hydrogen ion's going to be X. And uh, CH3COO negative 1 is also going to be X. So this one's a little different than the last problem. The last problem, remember, we had the hydrogen ion concentration from the pH, but we don't have it. We're after that, actually. So now the only thing I know to do is to take those equilibrium concentrations to plug them back into your Ka expression. Well, this kind of reminds me. This is the same statement I said that the hydrogen ion um, that's already present from the autoionization water should be negligible. Okay. So there's our Ka expression. So we have x times x in the numerator. In the denominator, we have a quantity 0 0.10 minus x is all equal to the Ka, which we said was 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. So um, we need to solve for x. And you guys have done that before, and it would involve using a quadratic. But I'm here to tell you that if we assume the amount of acid that ionizes is relatively small, like we saw last time, we can apply a simplifying, another simplifying assumption. Okay, so here we go. The simplifying assumption says that x is significantly less than, so to show significantly less than, when I say x is less than, less than, Point one zero, and what point one zero was is the molar concentration of our acid that we're our weak acid. So if X, the amount that dissolves, is a lot less than this, then that means our X basically in this this denominator goes away. So that means that the quantity um, point one minus X simply becomes point one. So point one minus X. Uh, equilibrium concentration of the uh, weak acid, it's going to be essentially 0 0.10, which is what we saw in the previous example. But that is has important ramifications because that makes our life easier. So your Ka expression then is simply going to be x squared over 0 0.10 is equal to 1.8 times 10 minus 5th. Now, I have a general rule of thumb here in red, so it must be important. This says the Hb, by the way, is your weak acid. So this says if your weak acid, which in this case was the CH3COOH, if that molar concentration is less than 100 times your Ka. So let's double check. Here's our Ka. So 100 times our Ka, you're looking at 1.8 times 10 to the, what, negative third? Okay. So is point one zero less than oh wait greater than that's right is point one zero greater than one point eight times ten to the negative three yeah so it should work the simplifying assumption it is okay so our ka expression becomes this now when you're working problems on tested homework don't forget to once you get to that point in the problem where you need to get rid of that ugly term to make your life easier, uh, um, you need to state your simplifying assumption. But now we crisscross multiply, and I'm going to take 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5th times 0.1, and then take the square root of that to get x, basically. So x is the square root of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 6th. Yep. So x is equal to 
0.0013. So that means that now we can go back to our ice table and we know what X means. X was the molar concentration of the H plus. It's also the molar concentration of the conjugate base. That's just the only one. And actually, our simplifying assumption is pretty good. That's pretty much less than, because X is pretty much less than 0 0.10. Um, this in green just tells you that if you were to use the quadratic without applying the simplifying assumption, in this case, you would get exactly the same number. So that's the answer to one of the questions. And now to knock out the pH, we're going to take negative log of that number. So negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration is the log of quantity 0 0.0013 gives you 2.87. So that's your pH. Two short sections. <laughs> so those are fun. Okay. We'll take a look at the next part. Um, the more you do them, the more they will make sense. So. All right. Polyprotic acids. <laughs> What's that? I was looking at it at the time, and I said we can do the whole unit. <laughs> yeah. No, we'll just do this part. Yeah, we'll probably be done early. So I don't know. Yep. I'm used to like being so behind. Okay. This was like this is like a deja vu slide because we already kind of talked about this a little bit. Um, we said with regard to acids, you can have an acid that just kicks off one proton, like HCl. You can have an acid that kicks off more than one proton, like H2SO4, polyprotic acid. And amphiprotic is something that can be both um, a proton donor and a proton acceptor. And that definitely happens too, amphiprotic. Um, actually, I think um, H2O. Yeah, H2O. It accepts the protons, becomes H3O plus, and it donates the protein, it becomes O minus. Yeah. So it can be both and proteic. So if you do, and I kind of mentioned this the other day when we're looking at KAs, um, if you do have something that's probably protic, you are going to have a Ka for each proton it can kick off. It kind of looks at it stepwise, okay? Um, and specifically, each time, it's kind of like um, is it ionization energy. I don't know if you remember clear back. It's, it's easiest to kick off the first electron, and then after that, it gets harder to kick off the next electron. Kick off the next electron is even higher ionization energy. So that's kind of what it is with, I think, Ka's. Um, they get less and less um, degree of ionization, it de decreases. So we're going to do a problem here with sulfuric acid, and um, you have an option of kind of blowing off the second ionization because it's so little compared to the first. Or you can look at uh, sulfuric acid as, as collectively, both ionization processes, totally so. Um, so only have this one example. I'm not going to draw on the board or not. But H2, H2SO4, the 2 associated with the hydrogen kind of says it looks like it might be polyprotic. And you're right. I'm here to tell you though, it's one of our sulfuric acid is one of our six strong acids. And so the first one goes completely. And then the second one has a Ka associated with it. It has an equilibrium arrow in it. A moderate KA second ionization. So strong acid that has um, strong acids that have only one arrow. Right? Strong acids have only one arrow, and for this polyprotic acid, you're going to have to don't let it throw you off the first one. And I maybe I will just drop this. It's coming up too. What you're going to see is the first one kicks off like that. And then this guy, this bisulfate ion, 
then it's going to be a two-way. Okay, so, yeah. And then this problem, we're going to basically kind of look at the, the hydrogen ion coming from both of those steps. So we're supposed to come up with the pH of this 0.1 molar solution um, by first consider, uh, what, by considering both ionizations. Um, and then italics, kind of a follow-up question, and this will become uh, apparent as we do the problem. Um, what if we look at both of them, or what if we just look at this one? Okay, so the Ka's that you'll find for H2SO4 are the Ka for the first um, deprotonization, kicking off a hydrogen. That's just very large. It just basically, if it's very large, that's, that's your one-way arrow. Um, for this one, it's actually got still a pretty high Ka. So we aren't ever going to know first one? The first one, you won't, um, yeah, it's just big. And the big Ka is represented by kind of the one-way arrow. So when we start working this problem, uh, for instance, we're going to see that because this one-way arrow, this is going to be this. You don't have to do any, um, since it goes completely, you don't have to do any ice table or equilibrium or anything. So, I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. Okay, so, um, let's see. So that H plus from the first ionization is going to be 0.10 molar. I put it on the board because it's K is very large. It's soon to ionize completely. And so we do have um, a common ion effect. So coming on, how do I say this? The presence of the presence of this actually is a player when we go to look at this equilibrium. Because it's there, stepwise, okay, so before this happens, this has to happen, and this will actually add to the common ion effect. It's not like the common ion effect of the point the 1 times 10 to the negative 7th moles per liter from auto-ionization. This actually is a player. So we're going to have to um, see how that fits in our ice table. So the ice table is just for the second ionization. Just for the second ionization. So we're looking at the HSO4 in equilibrium with H plus plus SO4 2 minus. So you can see that initially we're going to have 0 0.10 molar. Um, these are both 0 0.10 molar. So this is going to be my um, reactant. Okay, this guy goes to here. And this is a common ion here. Okay. The sulfate, none initially. We can go ahead and like you see, we're going to let X be equal to the moles per liter of the HSO4 that ionize to kick off another proton. So we have negative X and plus X and plus X. We know then with an ice table, we take the initial, we apply the change and come up with equilibrium concentrations. So at equilibrium, you're looking at the molar concentration of your HSO4 minus is 0.10 minus X. The hydrogen ion created by the second ionization be 0.10 plus X. And then your sulfate ion will be X. So, and we have the Ka here. So we can go back and take these quantities and plug them into our equilibrium constant expression, and they look like this. Which, again, we're going to be faced with a quadratic equation. So, but we can apply the simplifying assumption. And 
in this case, we're again our simplifying assumption is that x is significantly smaller than the molar concentration of the weak acid. In this case, the weak acid was that HSO4 negative, so 0.1. So x is relatively small compared to 0.1. Then the quantities uh, 0.1 plus x and 0.1 minus x become 0.1. So if we revisit the statement up above, I know it feels weird, it's like magic. So if we apply this, then this becomes 0.1 and this becomes 0.1 and 0.1 divided by 0.1 is 1. Yeah. So then you end up with your x is equal to 0 0.02, 0 0.012. I know it's kind of weird, but just bear with me. And actually, here in a minute, I have using the quadratic um, to get an exact solution. So, what was x? X was this amount of hydrogen ion that would be added from the second ionization. So, um, <coughs> we said that the factor is 100, so oh, I messed this up a minute ago. If you take, uh, how does this work? If you take your Ka times 100, that gives me 1.2, right? And so is 0 0.10 greater than 1.2? No. So actually, that's why the slide says, uh, you know, a simplifying assumption, maybe wouldn't there be the route to go. Um, instead of point what do I say, 0.012? Um, if you do the quadratic, you'll get 0.0098 using the quadratic. So here in a minute, as I kind of finish the problem, you're going to see me go with this more exact solution. So. All right. So from the first ionization, we got molar concentration of hydrogen ion 0.10 because it's a strong acid. In the second ionization, using the quadratic, you're looking at 0 0.0098 moles per liter. And here's where you run into, um, if you're sticking strictly with the rules of rounding, your answer's got to be um, 0.11. Yeah. If you add them together, you're only allowed two decimals and on our calculator. We're gonna, it's going to give us 0.1098. So that rounds to 0.11. Okay. So we were supposed to come up with the pH. So we know how to do that. To knock out pH then, if we take negative log of 0.11, um, and two sig figs, we show the sig figs after the decimal, you're going to be looking at a pH of 0.96, considering both ionizations. And if we were to go back to just the first ionization, if you take the negative log of that, you're going to get a pH of 1.00. So, um, what, 0.04 units? Now remember, units on the pH scale, it's they're a jump of uh, factor 10, so there's a little, they're logarithmic. So. All right. So this, this guy right here, this bisulfate ion HSO4 negative 1, that actually is something else that can accept a proton and donate a proton. So that makes it amphiprotic. Um, as it accepts a proton, it's behaving like a base. As it donates a proton, it's behaving like an acid. So which way it's going to go depends upon what else is in the soup with it. Um, Acid-base um, reactions, you just got to look at, like I said, what's happening, what sort of chemistry can be happening in the same pot with it. So water is the most common amphiprotic substance. You can donate and accept a proton. I know, we're not doing another part. You guys got plenty.
Is it short though? Is the next part short too? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we got more than that problem. Well, not more than enough. I think I know. Yeah, it's like super short. Yeah. Oh, the next one is? Yeah. It's time. Yes, that's good.